to decide on your starting point for your calculations. There are only two dates you really need to remember for this. That's the 1st of January 1901, which was a Tuesday, and the 1st of January 2001, which was a Monday. If your target date is anything later than the 1st of January 2001, then you use that as your starting point. Otherwise, you use the 1st of January 1901. If your target date is way back in the past, you need to step back as many steps of 400 years as you can in order to get back past and therefore behind the target date. Uh, if it's far into the future, you can step forward in blocks of 400 years, uh, but remembering never to go ahead of your target date. The 400 year steps are for free, so to speak, because the calendar reproduces itself precisely every 400 years because it's an exact number of weeks. The, exact, the actual number is 20,871. Then the next step is to move forward in steps of 100 years at a time. Uh, each of these now starts to add to a subtotal, a, a running total, which you should be keeping a note of. Uh, you might look at this as being spare days being put into a basket. Each step of 100 years, I say, adds five spare days to that basket. That takes you into the right century. You can then move forward in steps of 28 years at a time. These are also free moves. But again, you still have to remember not to go past the target. Uh, 28 year steps are all for free because the calendar will reproduce itself exactly every 28 years within a given century. Unless you land on the actual century year itself by ending double zero, which you won't do if you start from the zero and one year, which you should be doing. Once you get to within 28 years, you then move forward four years at a time, and each of these steps also adds five spare days to your basket, just as the steps of 100 years do. That's because in a group of four years, you have one spare day for each year, and one extra spare day for each leap year. So it's five, year, five spare days in a four-year span. When you get to within four years of your target date, you move forward one year at a time. Uh, each one year, given you from the fact that a year is 52 weeks and one day, each year adds one more spare day to your basket load. By now, you've reached the correct year, and you start to go forward in months. For each 31-day month that you leave, doesn't matter about the, the months that you actually go into, it's leaving the month that matters. For each 31-day month, you add three spare days to your basket, because 31 days is four weeks and three spare days. And in a similar manner, each 30-day month that you leave behind adds two days to your basket. And February, being normally 28 days, doesn't add anything to the basket at all, unless it's a leap year in which case it adds one. Now it can be a little tricky to work out which years are leap years and which are not. The rules for this can seem to be a bit awkward, but there's a fairly easy way of working through it. You just look at the last two figures of the year number and see if they're divisible by four. If, it's a double, if the last two figures are double zero, you look at the previous two figures and see if that number is divisible by four, even if it, that in itself happens to be another double zero. <coughs> if the two-figure number you're looking at is divisible by four, then that year is a leap year. If not, it is not. It's as simple as that. Now, there is a shortcut for working through the months of the year. You can move forward in quarters. If you move from the 1st of January straight to the 1st of April and leave the first quarter behind, that takes one spare day back out of the basket, unless it's a leap year, in which case it leaves the basket load untouched. Moving from the second quarter into the third, being at the 1st of July, means that there is no change to the basket. 
and moving from the third quarter to the fourth, putting you in the first of October, that adds, <coughs> excuse me, that adds one spare day into your basket load. And whichever quarter you end up in, you can then move forward by months, as I've already explained. When you get to the correct month for your target date, you look to see how many spare days you've collected together in your basket, whatever the running total is at that point. Then you add the date number of your target date and subtract one. And the reason for subtracting one is because you're actually starting on day one of that month and not day zero. That now gives you your final total. And whatever that total is, you can take away from that total as many multiples of seven as you can, i.e. bundling up your spare days into exact weeks, until you've got fewer than seven days left. And however many spare days you have left, all you do then is move forward from, your, from the day of the week of your chosen starting point by that number of days, and that will put you on the correct day of the week for your target. In competitions, it's quite common to have a whole lot of dates to work with, in which case, when you've done all of them, or some of them, you can check by using one of the dates as a new starting point and applying the same process to go on to the next and the next and so on to see if they all link together. If one of the dates falls out of step, you've probably got that one wrong, in which case it's time to recalculate. If they all link together, chances are you've got them all right. But it would still be a good idea to check these dates, or a single date if you're working with a single date, against a date for which you already know the day of the week, such as the day you were born, or for those of you who are or have been married, the date you were married, or perhaps a famous date in history, such as the attack on Pearl Harbor, 7th December 1941, which was a Sunday. It's also possible that some questions can come up asking you on what date within a particular month was, say, the second Sunday or the fourth Saturday or the third Wednesday. In that case, it's just a relatively simple matter of calculating the day of the week for the first date in that month, seeing how many if any days you need to move forward to get to the right day of the week, and then seeing how many weeks, i.e. multiple for seven, you need to add on to that date to get the correct week, such as the third Wednesday in August 1999. We calculate that the first of August 1999 is a Sunday. You need to move forward three days, therefore, to get to a Wednesday. And then two more weeks, which would put you on the 4th, of course. And then two more weeks, which would put you on the 18th, to get you to the third Wednesday. And the third Wednesday, August 1999, was indeed on the 18th. Now, if I could just ask someone to give me a randomly chosen date from past or future history. Uh, my birthday, the 4th of October, 1973. 4th of October, what year? 1973. 1973. Okay, in 1973, that's before 1st of January 2001, obviously, so we use 1901 as the starting date. And we can go forward two steps of 28 years, which is 56, to get to 1957. Then we, these were three. And then from 1957, we go forward in blocks of four years without going past 1973. That's 1961, 65, 69, 73. Four blocks, five spare days for each one, that's 20. 1973 was not a leap year, it's an odd numbered year, so that relieves us of that potential sticky point. And we move from the first right through to the fourth quarter, so we lose one date, one spare day for the first quarter, make no change for the second, and then add one back for the third. So we're back to our 20 spare days in the basket. 
and we're in October, which is the correct month. Um, I believe he said the 4th. So 20 plus the 4 for the date number is 24. And not forgetting to take away that 1, that leaves us with 23. And we can take three sevens, which are 21, away from that, leaving us with 2. So we move forward two days from our starting point at 1901, that was a Tuesday. Moving forward two days from Tuesday leaves us on Thursday. So that date would have been on a Thursday. Okay, bravo. Let's see. Sixth of May, 1966, George. <laughs> okay, 1966. Again, it's a 20th century date, so we don't <coughs> uh, we don't need to start from 2001. We go from 1901. Again, we can go forward two blocks of 28 years, like 1956, maybe 1957. And um, going forward, we step for four years, it's 1961, 1965. We don't go to 1969 because that would be too late. So we have two blocks, five spare days each, that's ten. Now that puts us in 1965, so we do need to go forward one more year to get to 1966. So that's one more spare day in the basket. And uh, that leaves us with a total so far of eleven. And 1966 was not a leap year. If you look at the last two figures, that two sixes, 66, 66 is not divisible by four. By two, yes, but not by four. So not a leap year. We leave the first quarter to go into April. Now this takes, with it not being a leap year, this takes one spare day back from our basket, leaving us with 10. And moving from April into May, with April being a 30-day month, we're leaving that behind, so we're adding two days for a 30-day month, which gives us 12. Um, I think you said the 26th, is that correct? That's right. The 12 plus the date number 26 gives us 38. Take one away from that, gives us 37. And we can take away five multiples of seven, i.e. five weeks, which is a total of 35 days, leaving us with just two left. So we go forward two days from our starting point, which again was a Tuesday, and moving forward two days from Tuesday is a Thursday. So that takes us yeah. right to Thursday. Bravo. Okay, well that's that's great. We're gonna Awari needs